I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. This is a 71 Corniche. It has the brake fluid hydraulic system that runs off of the 363 fluid. I have seen like this car, it didn't really, I think it had one brake pressure light coming on, even though it needs these. So this is another part of the system, this brake pressure switch. So what will happen with these sometimes is they'll, over time, they will get stuck. So they either get stuck on or they get stuck off. So if you start your car in the morning um, and you don't see any pressure lights, I guess that's okay. Um, what you want to do is you want to turn the car off, turn the ignition back on, and start pumping the brakes. What you want to do is you want to depressurize these. You want to get these to make those lights come on. And if you pump away for 100 pumps and you never see the lights come on, then your lights are not working. You've got a problem. Most often it's in the switch or they're disconnected. I've seen that before where people will disconnect them because it's annoying, that red light, right? Put aside the fact that that's a safety issue. Aha, you rebuild these. So the nitrogen goes in this side. It has this danger tag on here. Um, you use a bottle with an adapter and you refill them. I do not recommend that you just add gas unless you know the condition of the diaphragm in there because it can leak out of here. Typically what happens is that diaphragm will, will burst. So the nitrogen will go into your braking system and go away. Okay, so then you don't have a diaphragm working. We're going to take this apart. We'll, we should have plenty of time. We'll take one apart and show you what they look like inside. Um, so back to the beginning. Number one system runs brakes, four wheels. Number two system runs rear brakes. And then also, remember it has that larger reservoir. It runs the hydraulic system, the leveling system. Now I've got some components here off the leveling system. This is one of the valves, okay? This, there's one valve on each side. This is a ram. This goes up on top of the spring in the back, above the shock, and it's designed to, oh, this one's probably gonna be stuck on here. Yeah, this has been laying around 100 years, there we go. This right here screws into the top of the shock perch, and when this, this valve tells it, when it needs that extra lifting power, it'll shoot high pressure fluid in here and will lift the car that up to that much. So it can lift the car like three inches. Okay, that's your ramp. One on each spring, one valve on each trailing arm. Now before the, these valves get their high pressure fluid, they come in through this. This is your height control solenoid. As you can see, I cut the lines on this. It's electrically activated. It's designed to come on on early cars when the doors are open in park or neutral. Later cars, I think it's just park or neutral. And when it's activated electrically, what it does is, I think this is a high pressure end. It, um, it allows maximum flow. And the idea is that when, let's back up one second. This system is designed to bring the car back to normal height when you add weight. It's not designed to hold the car up at all times to a, a nice look, right? It's not designed for that. If you've got a car that's sagging when it sits uh, on these early systems, then it's just springs. Your springs are sagging, they're getting weak, and you can adjust the springs or with shims, or you can replace them to bring it to normal height. This hydraulic lifting system is designed just to hold the car in the right position when you add extra passengers, luggage. Um, it shouldn't really come on for just one person driving a car, the uh, like a driver. It's, it's, it's adjustable. As you can see, this linkage here, this height control valve has an adjustment here. The earlier ones have shorter arms and they have a slot, but th that has to be adjusted. So back to this solenoid, this is designed when it's activated in fast mode to quickly adjust the car back to normal height, okay? Once you put it into gear, the car, this turns off and it goes into slow mode. So it still allows 
fluid to come through and pressurize, but it's at a much, much less volume. So it's not, because when you think about it, this much volume is gonna depressurize that accumulator pretty quick. We don't want it working all the time. Um, when I have seen cars where people have adjusted the height control to make the car look right, uh, to where it will feed back into the braking system. And you go over a bump and the brakes will come up. Bump, brakes will come up. That's related to these restrictor valves. There are two of these restrictor valves. They're hooked into the lines for this, these, these, these control valves. And one's on a low pressure circuit, one's on a high pressure circuit. And what they do is just kind of regulate the flow a little bit. And they will stick, they'll get plugged up. All this stuff, all these hydraulic components, a little piece of dirt gets in there, it can cause a lot of problems. And that's why they have those really fine screens. Not only do they have a screen when you pour the fluid in, but they have a screen where it comes out of the reservoir and goes to the pumps. Because you don't want anything getting in there and, and causing issues. The one bad thing about these rams is if you need to change your rear shocks, you cannot get to the upper shock bolts because they're in here without pulling the ram off. And um, since Mr. Murphy likes these cars, well, I'm talking about Murphy's Law, if you pull these off to put shocks on without putting new seals in, I promise you they're going to leak after. That's uh that's 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 just a common thing you do when when you change the rear shocks on these you want to do the rams also. Um, these are hard to do on the series two shadows because there's a gas tank in the way. Actually, yeah, the, the late '76 cars before the shadow two they had a, a high gas tank too, so they're they're more difficult. The earlier cars are real easy to get to. So that's basically an overview of the hydraulics on the Silver Shadow. They licensed a lot of this stuff from Citroen back in the day when they went away from the old Silver Cloud brakes that had a mechanical assist, which I, I, I think is just a beautiful system. So, so I guess we'll take a quick break and I'll get my tools out and we'll take one of those accumulators apart so you can see what those look like. These accumulators, now, I don't recommend really anybody try to rebuild these yourself, only because you need specialized tooling. This you can buy these. These are you can get these at uh, British Tool Works in Utah. This accumulator tool that's just meant, or the sphere tool that's meant to unscrew and and work on that sphere, is nine hundred dollars. Okay, and then you need a gas bottle of of nitrogen with some some regulator and then a, a hose and an adapter. Uh, so it's quite pricey unless you're gonna be doing these all the time. But if you wanna do your own, you can. Um, the kits are not too bad. I sell the kits. I've had the kits made for many years. When I first started working in this business way back in late 70s, early 80s, that's about all I did was Silver shadow accumulators. And remember, they weren't that old back then. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew this sphere from this valve body. And I'll show you my, my cheater method. <laughs> 